Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another live webinar session brought to you by EE Tech and AllAboutCircuits.com. My name is Jason Montgomery, and I'll be your moderator for this session today. Today, we're joined by Omron, which is going to be giving us a presentation titled Preventive Maintenance Solutions, New Innovative Products for Smart Home and Building and Workplace Safety. I'll hand it over to our presenter in just a moment, but as a reminder to everyone that's here in attendance, for this live session, you can submit questions that we'll do in a live Q&A uh, once Carrie's presentation is over. So make sure to use that Q&A widget to submit any questions, and we look forward to the conversation that will be following this presentation. Let me briefly introduce our speaker, who is Carrie Haran, the product manager of sensors and modules for Omron. He attended the Georgia Institute of Technology, where he obtained his BS in mechanical engineering. And he's currently the sensor product manager for Omron, serving as America's technical contact for Omron's diverse sensor product offerings. He has expertise in the manufacturing field, including smart home buildings, healthcare, and commercial applications. And we're very excited to have him here today. Uh, Kerry, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. I'll hand it off to you. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for the introduction and thank you all of you for uh, being a part of this webinar. Uh, I'm excited to share with you some of our products, uh, as Jason said, relating to preventative maintenance solutions. Uh, as he said, I'm the product manager for sensors and modules at Omron, working primarily with our existing technology. But I've also been working a lot with our team of engineers to develop a couple of new products that are going to be well suited for the preventative maintenance sector. So I'm excited to share with you some of those developments that we have. Uh, before we go into it, I want to share a little bit of information about who we are for those of you who may not be familiar with Omron as a whole. Um, so Omron is one of the leading innovators in product development in various different industries. Uh, we have a global headquarters in Japan, and within our company, we have several different divisions that have expertise in uh, many different types of developments. Uh, we have our healthcare business, which centers around, uh, obviously, devices in, in healthcare. Probably one of our most known, as you see a lot of those household items in big box retailers, you'll see our blood pressure monitors and thermometers. Uh, social system solutions is with a lot of, if you've been to Japan, a lot of the ticketing booths that you may see, um, but a lot of public works developments that are in uh, that division of Omron. Our IA business is probably our largest working in products and industrial automation. Uh, where I am working though is in our electrical and mechanical components division, where we create components that are part of a larger system as a whole. So within our sensors and modules, uh, we also have our uh, power relays, our switches and connectors, and our developing modules, which I'm excited to share with you today. So um, a little bit of background on this project that I'm going to be talking about. Um, for smart home and building and building maintenance, we are looking to combat a growing need for businesses addressing emergency events quickly and safely. Uh, with the changing workforce, and that comes with time as employees get older, as well as the current workplace environment shift that's caused by COVID, uh, we have a lot of different factors that can make it very difficult to handle the changing and the sudden workload that may come in place when there are emergency issues that happen. Um, so these different events that can cause machine breakdowns can work to work stoppage, can lead to repairs and some safety issues. Many of us may have experienced situations where there are machine breakdowns. Many of us are experiencing some supply chain issues that uh, of course are causing our own delays, but there are also delays that we can help prevent with some of our sensor solutions. Um, some of these devices that may break down can also cause a safety issue, uh, which can also be very difficult for people to deal with as well as uh, different industries to deal with as they uh, work through putting their products out there. So machines can be down for a long time, productions can be at a standstill. So our goal here is to develop different sensor components that can help limit the effects of what we're calling uh, irregular event zero. Uh, that irregular event is something specific that has triggered uh, a larger situation uh, to delay the workflow. So for example, a machine going down uh, or any other incident that um, 
may stop may stop the workflow that's taking place. So with any solution that can be prevented by a sensor, we're looking to develop modules that can help uh, work in those types of situations. So within our SHB and preventative maintenance solutions, of course, we have um, the need to help manage building activity and structures easily. So that can really fit for a variety of different solutions um, or situations. In uh, elevators and escalators, daily transport uh, throughout the building, those obviously are large machines that go through regular inspection and are used very frequently. Air handling equipment is running almost 24 seven. Uh, room safety, as you're looking into monitoring the environment conditions of a room and even looking for um, gas leaks that may come up. There's a lot of different places that can require uh, sensors that would be able to help alert the building managers in the event of something that is going on that um, needs needs addressing. So of course there's a concern for more streamlined building maintenance to keep machinery running and worker health uh, in good condition. So sensors can work in air handling equipment as we say here, elevators and escalators, room monitoring, and then worker safety. Um, for outdoor workers especially, we have a sensor module that is going to be designed to help keep their, uh, them safe as well, even when they're outside of these buildings. So before we get into some of these specific products, let's start with a little poll question here. Um, a window should pop up for you, but what are some of the major innovation needs for smart home and building sensors and building maintenance solutions that you're seeing? Uh, is that looking at the machine condition, ensuring that all parts are operating smoothly and are not showing any signs of failure? Uh, worker environment safety, ensuring that those working out in the field are not in any harsh conditions? Or room monitoring, these are full sensor modules capable of reading multiple different characteristics of an area, including person detection, humidity sensing, and leak detec detection. So I'll give everybody just a couple minutes to answer that. All right, so moving forward, let's take a look at one of the first products that we are developing for this uh, type of environment, and that is our motor condition monitoring device. This is a device that we are developing to measure vibration levels of industrial or commercial equipment to sense for any potential uh, indications of wear or breakdown. So. Uh, the background of this development, before machine failure, there may often be signs indicating potential breakdown. And that could be, uh, those different signs could be reduced productivity, such as in uh, air, less, less air put out in HVAC and air handling equipment, uh, increased, of a, impre excuse me, increased vibration, which can be caused by parts wearing down, uh, oil levels dropping, parts becoming loose over time. Uh, that can cause machines to vibrate a little more aggressively as they're running. And then temperature fluctuation, lower output or uh, part failure can cause machines to overheat or even run a little colder if, um, if the situation is, it causes the machine to run a little bit colder. So there's a lot of different uh, signs that can be uh, attributing to machine breakdown. These signs are unpredictable. A lot of these machines have annual inspections coming through or inspections coming through every couple of months, but these unpredictable causes can happen in between those inspection times. So sometimes you need a device that will be able to alert the user immediately when something is going wrong. So our goal here is to develop a version that is smarter to suit the IoT space and that is cost effective and easy to install which brings us to our device, the motor condition monitoring device. Now, there are current solutions that are on the market for this particular device. Uh, however, the problem with these solutions is that normal installation can be very complex and it can be very costly. So our goal, again, is to develop a module that is easier for people to uh, approach and install, as well as uh, smarter and quicker for them to use. So while uh, some products that are on the market are much more complex, reading for 
heat reading for uh, electrical input. These sensors are going to be simpler and reading only vibration levels to make sure that the machine is running smoothly. So here we have a picture of our module that's in place. Uh, it is equipped with an accelerometer for vibration sensing. It's BLE enabled for wireless communication. And then we have our own internal software and algorithms that uh, can be used to monitor uh, condition estimation. So these are easy to install and battery operated. And you can see on the right hand side, we have a display of how this sensor really works. What we have here at the top is a graph that shows exactly how the machine is operating under new or normal conditions. And that right there is what we can set or is what the user can set as a threshold for normal operating conditions. As parts wear down and as vibration level increases, you see the readout that you get on the bottom. And that is with the machine that may be running and still giving you the right output. So maybe other indicators don't sense that something is going on. But these vibration levels can indicate that something may need some maintenance, a part may need to be replaced, or uh, uh, some blockage may need to be fixed. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to show you a video here. We have a video clip that's getting pushed out. My apologies for the noise. Um, but what we see here is our device in action. We have two different uh, table fans that are set up. One of them new out of the box and another one go, uh, having a couple of uh, conditions that are caused by part wear and um, uh, maintenance issues that, that, that are causing the vibration levels to increase. You can see in the video, and I can play it again for anybody who uh, might be interested in, in seeing it, but um, you can see here on this picture, the dial of the reader on the top is looking is pointing at yellow while the newer fan is running at green that higher vibration is indicating to the user that there may be something wrong with this fan and there may be something that needs to be addressed to keep it running smoothly so this is a demonstration of our sensor in action but of course we have uh other ways that the sensor can be tested if you're interested in procuring one of your own so uh, another poll question is popping up for you for this motor condition monitoring device. So for those of you who uh, are interested in this sort of solution, what key features are most interesting for, to you for this motor conditioning device? Is it that it's cost effective? Are you looking for something simpler, a lower maintenance solution to still detect potential causes of failure? Smart sensing, the sensor being BLE enabled, or are there additional features that you would like to see this sensor do? And of course, if that's your answer, we would love for you to get in touch with us and we can help uh, get a sensor in your hands for testing and to see exactly how it works for you. All right, we'll give everyone just a couple more seconds. All right, let's move forward. So the next product I'd like to talk about is uh, our heat stroke estimation sensor, an in-helmet environment sensor for workers that are out in the field. So the background with this particular project is our increased awareness for worker safety while outside or out in the field doing their jobs. Uh, maintenance devices typically in, are installed outdoors, such as transformers and large uh, handling equipment, radio towers, and often in remote locations. So when regular maintenance or inspections need to take place, these workers may be out for long periods of time, far away from points of contact or from emergency services. So there's always concern for workers that may be exposed in these hard conditions. Uh, that can apply to construction workers on the site or in remote in more remote locations. Uh, transformer repair, radio tower repairs and inspections, outdoor installations, and field surveying. These are all workers that are not always going to be very close or in the line of sight in case something may happen to them. So what we aim to do with this sensor is to help prevent injury and worker incident due to these working conditions. 
So introducing our in-helmet environment sensor. This is a sensor that we're developing to go inside of workers' helmets. It will be a portable environment sensor. Uh, this sensor would also be BLE-enabled BLE to connect directly to tablet or to secure mobile networks. This is very handy for workers who may, there may be many workers who are out in various different locations, and a central location can be able to gather all of this data and everything can be read remotely. For those of you who may be familiar with Omron's products, we do also have an environment sensor. It's using very similar technology here where it is a completely uh, portable module that is uh, equipped with several different sensors to read a couple of different conditions that may be a concern for, work, for worker safety. In the lower left-hand corner, we have some details on what this sensor would be equipped with. I would be equipped with a thermal slash humidity sensor to read uh, the heat stroke estimate or the uh, make sure that there's no high temperatures that the workers are uh, exposing themselves to for long periods of time. An accelerometer for fall detection is also important uh, because as workers may be out for a long period of time and if they experience dehydration or heat stroke, uh, they can pass out without warning. And then of course, uh, some workplace accidents can be prevented using this module as a vibration sensor can also uh, detect if there's been um, any unusual collision. So this sensor being equipped in the helmet, being able to uh, communicate with a mobile app will be able to work smart with um, a lot of other different information, including the worker ID, their GPS location, um, and any alerts uh, that are taking place due to the environment conditions. Uh, we're aiming for this sensor to also be able to cause al to signal alerts uh, to the, not only to the user who's wearing the sensor, um, but also to the central database so that uh, those who may be monitoring sensor activity can check in with the workers and make sure that they're uh, still safe and, st and uh, not overworking themselves. So we come into yet another quick poll question uh, talking about this environment sensor. So what features are most interesting to you for this in-helmet environment sensor? Is it the smart solution, BLE sensing with, uh, with alerts showing when there are signs of danger? Long range operation, being able to read status of workers at a distance. It's compact design, being able to be battery operated and portable, hooking into the helmet. Uh, or fall detection, sensing worker safety in a case of an accident that may be caused by uh, a fall or uh, object collision. Give everybody about a minute or 30 seconds or so to answer that. All right, so uh, um, with that, I'd like to share a couple of more developments that we have coming soon. Um, within our smart home and building uh, development team, we have a couple of products, of course, uh, that I've just talked about that we are on the way of moving forward on. Um, but with these upcoming developments, we are hard at work testing these out. Um, we also have some uh, early designs available. So I'd like to talk to you about some of these upcoming releases that we have and love to gain um, some uh, or, or show, show, show you all how these work and um, drum up some interest here. So uh, first we have our room monitoring solution. Uh, this is a full module that is uh, equipping several of our existing technologies onto a single base board. And that includes our existing thermal IR sensor, our IR camera and our facial recognition software, our environment sensor and our ultrasonic wave sensor to detect several different environment conditions on a single baseboard in a single room. So within event detection, we can do we can use our IR sensor and our fate and our uh, body detection and facial recognition software to read in case that there are, uh, in case there are people who may be in the room uh, that 
uh, may not be uh, may not be scheduled to work in this area. So these room monitoring sensors would be able to monitor key areas and building environments to make sure that there is no unusual activity that are taking that's that are taking place. Uh, these are also ideal for server rooms and climate controlled storage as the environment sensors would be able to read in case there are any environment conditions that will be harmful to the products that are inside. The sensor would be also uh, able to detect different disasters that may take place, such as sparks with the ultrasonic wave sensor, uh, pressure drop with our pressure change sensor, uh, leakage with our humidity sensor, earthquake activity with our seismic sensor, and then different abnormalities such as temperature, noise, and uh, air quality. So with this sensing module, we plan to have a full room monitoring solution that would be able to read multiple different environment characteristics simultaneously on a single baseboard. Uh, this would be certainly ideal for not just the server rooms in the climate, constro climate controlled areas, but in any room of, of a home or office that uh, you're looking to have full environment safety. Uh, next, we have our RGB oil sensor. Now, this is utilizing some of our existing technology in our optical sensor line, uh, the B5W series, for those of you who are familiar with our Omron products. So we developed this project from a background of detecting oil quality within transformers. Uh, however, that is, of course, expanded into looking at the oil quality or the fluid quality and many other different types of devices. Because as machines go through their regular life cycle, oil or um, uh, lubricant may degrade and darken over time. As you can see on the far right side, we have an image of uh, some of our testing facility and looking at uh, newer oil and then oil as it starts to degrade. You can see it starts to become a little bit more opaque. It's that brighter yellow. So what we are developing is a sensor that's able to read the RGB values of the fluid that's in front of it to help determine whether or not it is uh, degraded to a point that it is no longer usable. So what this sensor is doing, it is using uh, the internal technology to detect the RGB values of the objects that are in front of it. So we can see in the lower left-hand side a model of how the sensor is going to look. Uh, and on the right-hand side, some of our uh, findings in studying what the RGB ratio is going to look like between new and degraded oil. Our engineers have been hard at work uh, looking at what exactly we're going to be reading in various different instances. We understand that in certain machines and obviously with certain uh, different types of fluid that's gonna behave differently, the signs of oil deg degradation might come in a couple of different forms whether that is uh, increased opacity, such as the picture we see here on the right, or in some cases, the oil may darken or change color. Uh, so we're looking at a couple of different RGB ratios between uh, a clean and well-running solu um, solution versus one that is uh, past its usable point. So uh, we're, of course, uh, hard at work in um, getting this development ready. Uh, we're hoping to get uh, people who, uh, if you have any interest in learning more about this product, please be sure to reach out to me um, with my contact information at the end of this presentation. So into the future, we have a couple of more products uh, that we are continuing to develop. And of course, more information is available to anybody who has interest. Uh, excuse me, I forgot to get to the next slide. So as Omar continues development on these products, we are always hard at work. Um, first, we have our indicator level sensor, a device capable of reading pressure level indicators remotely. Um, with many different devices, again, similarly devices that are out in remote locations or out from any central place where the workers are generally located, uh, people will have to travel out to read um, level indicators to determine how machines are performing, uh, whether things are behaving properly. And this is especially true in uh, the power sector as um, it's very important to make sure that energy levels are operating normally. So what this sensor is doing, it's a similar um, optical sensor, similar to uh, our B5W sensor series, but one that's going to be equipped to read for the uh, needle position, uh, making sure that uh, the power levels are operating in the uh, right, right range of normal operation. 
And then also our water purity sensor, another optical sensor designed to detect water purity and clarity within a body of water, um, especially important in uh, the power grid, but also uh, many different operations that are looking for water filtration and uh, water cleanliness our optical sensor would be able to, um, is, is designed specifically for looking at the opacity and the cleanliness of water. Similar operation to our RGB sensor, but slightly different technology, though utilizing our optical sensing technology. And we have much more uh, coming, coming around. Um, we have uh, additionally, our um, engineers are working on um, air detection for uh, refrigerant leakage. Um, looking at air quality is especially important for us. And of course, um, worker safety and, and general population safety as we are developing some of our new sensing products. If you'd like to stay updated on all of our latest information, please uh, check out our newsletter, our Component Insider, uh, a regularly released newsletter where we are talk sharing all the latest developments that we have for Omron because we are, of course, always looking into the future to develop new products to improve lives and contribute to a better society. So I'll round everybody off with one last poll question moving forward on some of our uh, latest product developments. Uh, which of these is your product is your project facing today that can be helped with Omron sensors? Is that human detection through either video body detection or thermal sensors reading heat signals? Environment sensing reading basic environment characteristics, including humidity and toxic gas levels. Surge detection detecting electrical surges that may damage powered components. Air quality detection, sensing the presence of certain gases that may be danger to persons or equipment, such as toxic gases. Or optical sensing, devices to check liquid quality and purity through advanced optical sensing solutions. All right, I think that poll question should be up for everybody for a couple more seconds. But uh, while everybody is finishing off, I just want to thank everybody for attending. Uh, again, my name is Kerry Haran, Product Manager for Sensors and Modules. You are welcome to reach out to me with any questions that you may have, uh, but I am obviously sticking around for a little bit more of a Q&A for anybody who is uh, interested with any uh, more pressing questions. But please reach out at carry.haran at omron.com. And if you'd like to visit our website to learn a little bit more about our sensors as well as any of our components, please visit components.omron.com. Uh, thank you very much, Jason, and I will pass things back to you. Great. Thank you very much, Kerry. Uh, that was a fantastic presentation. And I can see from the questions that we have already gotten in that uh, there's a lot of interest about talking about some more of these things. So everyone in attendance, keep those questions coming. Uh, great time to submit some more questions right now. And uh, Carrie, let's let's dig into a few things that we've seen coming here. Um, first question that I've got here is uh, someone asking if you can talk um, a bit more about some of the other products uh, that you're working on right now. <laughs> Uh, sure. So uh, we've got a lot that, that we're working on. I mentioned them uh, briefly at the end of the presentation, but um, our engineers are working on a couple of different modules that really center around uh, smart home and building um, and building maintenance. Our real strategy, again, is coming into coming from this mindset of a regular event zero of looking at ways that we can employ sensor solutions to look at problems before they become bigger. Um, so with uh, some of the sensors that we are releasing, it's ones where we've seen uh, this need talked about a lot, um, where there aren't a lot of readily available solutions that can uh, really do these types of things. So our RGB sensor, for example, um, looking at the oil quality, that's been something that, you know, obviously there's, there's ways that We've done it for a long time, which is just looking with our eyes and seeing how the oil quality looks. And there's some tests that we can do as, as, as we uh, handle the oil directly. But it's been, it's been needs that we're looking for. Um, it's 
helping make that a lot easier and, and done automatically. So our RGB sensor for oil detection is, is really one that we've been targeting towards um, the energy space, but obviously we've seen it a lot um, in food and beverage, for example. I think we've seen, uh, we've, we've got some one customer who we're working with who is, who is um, using it as a way, or, or curious in it to use it in a way for detecting the oil level in the fryers. Um, another one is our Freon leak detection. Um, so that is something that we have some engineers currently. We are, are working on a couple of different types of refrigerants that are commonly used. Um, so there are ones that are that we've had people ask us about directly, and then also ones that we're just generally aware of. So we have some engineers who are um, just currently testing out our capabilities in looking at um, these different materials that can be uh, sensed by our technology. Great, thank you, Kerry. Uh, another question here, uh, just talking about new products. When can we see full releases of these new products? Um, so it's gonna depend on the product. Some of these that I talked about, especially at the end of the presentation, uh, we are still in development on. Um, but uh, a few of these, the motor condition monitoring device, we're uh, looking to put out within uh, FY22. So uh, within the year, uh, within the next fiscal year, we're looking to release some of these products. Uh, we have a timeline on, on all of these and, and, a, and our planned releases um, are, are scheduled and, and ready to go. Uh, but as we continue testing these modules and as we continue development, we're always looking for people who are uh, interested, who would like to do um, some of that early testing as well. Um, that way, uh, with these products and with our development team, uh, we can re readily and freely communicate with the people who really want this product to work out well. Uh, we find it very valuable, um, not only us developing a product to uh, suit the needs of people and their different projects, but also work directly with people to see exactly what are the main needs uh, that we're looking to answer with these with this new technology. Another question uh, is uh, samples, talking about when things are available, but what about samples available for testing? Um, we. It, again, that's good. That's going to depend on the on the product itself. Um, we have uh, a couple of different um, sample technology that is that is available, and of course, some of our sensor technology would be our existing sensor technology is is obviously one that is uh, based off of when we're developing some of these new products. Um, I would say specifically, if, if there are specific uh, samples that would be interesting to you, to reach out to me. Um, I can take you and connect you directly with our engineering team to talk a little bit more about uh, getting a product in your hands for um, e early testing. Great. And uh, uh, I think this, this might tie into this as well. I'll just read off this question for you, Gary. I have an idea about how a sensor can be used, but I don't know how to best incorporate it with my application. Is there a way I can get some guidance from Omron to get me started? Uh, yes, so absolutely. Um, we are uh, always available to help out people who are interested in incorporating this technology. Uh, we understand that not every solution is just going to be plug and play um, and, and immediately apparent how it's going to uh, work in specific systems. So we've we've done this we've we've done it plenty of times and we're always happy to do it with uh customers is uh connect them directly to our engineers uh work to provide the support necessary to at least get get your product um incorporated with with our different sensing technology um we have sample codes available on on github we have some guidance videos available on youtube as well um but when it really comes down to uh the the hard engineering questions uh, please reach out to our support team. Please reach out to me. Um, we have our engineers who are always willing to help out um, and uh, see what help with that we can get you in, in getting your project off the ground. Another question that I'm seeing here is uh, someone's asking if you can dig a little bit more into what uh, BLE is. 
uh, they are not up to date on that standard. Just would like some more yeah, information so, on that. Sorry about that. Uh, so B, excuse me, BLE uh, stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. So uh, when I mentioned that that sensors are BLE BLE enabled, means that they can uh, transfer that or, or send that data wirelessly through through Bluetooth. Great, thank you. And a couple more questions here. These might have been tied to some specific parts of your presentation, so we can mm -hmm. hop back if we need to do that, Carrie. But I think this question came in during the first video that you were playing in particular, and the question is, are the sensors on top of the motor? Um, so that I'm assuming with the motor condition monitoring device. Um, with those sensors and how they're mounted, it's not it, it's going to depend specifically on the application where the sensor is going to need to be mounted in order to get the best results um whether if they're on top of the motor directly um i would say it does not it will not necessarily need to be directly on top of the motor um again that's going to come with with different applications with uh, our tests when we were running it on the fans we uh, had the sensor running on the base of the fan um not on necessarily where the where the fans were spinning or on the the rotors the blades of the fan um so where the sensor needs to be mounted again it, it it's going to depend and uh we would obviously aim to make it so that it would be the easiest way to install possible and you wouldn't have to necessarily take anything apart uh or go into the small parts of the machine to to mount it properly Another question talking about physical configuration of things for the oil sensor that you were talking about. Does the RGB sensor need to be in contact with the oil? Um, not, so the, the oil directly, no. Um, so the optical sensor would be designed. So um, in, in several machines and several different types of machines, you may see that where you load where you fill the oil there's also a side indicator so you can easily without having to open the tank uh, for anyone to walk up and and check out to see the quality of the oil the sensor would be designed to look at those uh i guess i guess point of ports to to see the to oil it wouldn't need to be mounted like in and directly contact it but as long as it had a viewpoint um through the oil on against a neutral background um that would that would work to have the RGB sensor read the quality of the oil. Um, so it wouldn't need to you wouldn't need to open the tank for it. It can just be mounted outside um, that port where you're seeing the oil quality. Perfect. Thank you, Terry. Another question here talking about the portability of some of these things. Do you have any thermal cameras? that are capable of being portable in the way that maintenance engineers could take it into certain areas of a factory for particular readings? Um, unfortunately, we do not. Uh, we have a thermal IR sensor that is that is a component that can go into uh, those handheld thermal cameras. I think I'm familiar with what you're talking about. Um, our design is for the uh, component level products um, so the thermal sensor that would go into those thermal guns. Um, but it is it is certainly something that uh, is a good util utilization of our technology. Another question here, Carrie, this might be one that you'll want to follow up with offline, and that's uh, no problem if this is too much in the weeds. Are there any incremental or absolute optical encoders in your product line that you could recommend for rotary and linear applications? Uh, yes. Um, so we have um, a number of optical uh, encoders. Uh, we have our um, optical sensing line, our photomicrosensor series. Um, so we have uh, a number of different products that I can direct you to um, for both rotary and linear applications. Um, so I think that there are a couple that uh, I can share from our side as well as our IA side that would be um, a, a good match here. So I, I can certainly uh, reach out on that. Great. We'll make sure to get you connected there and uh, get that follow-up. Um, 
Uh, next question is, can the motor vibration sensors be used on other equipment, such as pumps or other driven equipment? Absolutely. Um, our motor vibration sensors are not specifically designed for air handling equipment or for um, transport equipment, but um, any machine or any heavy machinery that's operating is generally going to have some vibration as it's running. Um, so uh, especially with pumps, I think that's going to be a great fit um, for uh, th this particular application. Um, so yeah, our, our motor condition monitoring device uh, would be a, a great fit for something like that. Another question here, do you have a sensor to detect R290, I believe that's propane, uh, for refrigeration or chillers? Uh, currently we do not, but our engineers are hard at work looking to create sensors. We're looking to develop sensors that would be good for uh, these types of applications. So um, R290 is something that I can uh, also you know, confirm that that's something that we're looking at, but uh, this type of application is definitely something that we're working on with our uh, engineering team. Great. And we had a person just write in making sure that they've got your email here, correct? And so it's carry.haran at omron.com. Is that correct on the slide there? That is right. That's my email. Please feel free to reach out. Awesome. Well, Carrie, we, that was a really good batch of questions. Everyone, if there's anything else on your mind, we've got a little bit of time left, but while we might be waiting for a few more to roll in, anything else you want to touch on, Carrie, or anything that we should be uh, covering here? Um, all I'll say uh, for for anyone else is is um, if there are applications, you know, I I represent uh, a, just a small portion uh, on this part of the presentation here represents only a small portion of my product line, and even that is a small portion of everything that we have to offer at Omron. Um, if you have uh, a project that you uh, had in mind and you're looking at this presentation and you're thinking. Well, that all sounds great, but none of this is going to help me because I need something that can do something entirely differently. Um, please, of course, feel free to reach out. Um, anything that you have in mind that uh, you think could benefit from some sensor solution or some sensing technology, um, I'm always happy to uh, reach out and, and work with um, people on new different types of projects and work with our engineers and getting uh, something new and interesting in their hands to, to make their product work. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's all I'll say on that. We're, we're, we're always uh, looking to see um, where our sensor can go in next. So, um, again, as, as, as someone just had asked, please feel free to reach out or to reach out to our um, development team to look into what else is coming out. Great. Thank you, Carrie. I do see one more question that's come in here. Um, and that question is, would the helmet sensor be rugged enough to be used by something like a fire department? Um, so <clears throat> that's actually a really great question. Um, we are, like I said, with this, with this sensor, is, it's something that we are uh, working on testing the limitations of on what we're able to do. Uh, with a fire department, I think that's a that's a great application idea, and it's something that we had considered. Um, so, I, I'll I'll confirm with our engineering team and, and talk to them about uh, meeting some of those additional concerns. Because with a fire department, you have more than just obviously thermal and humidity, um, but there's a lot more you want to focus on, especially the air quality and, and the amount of smoke that can be in the air. Um, so uh, that's something I actually w do want to come back to our team and, and see if that's uh, something that we'd want to be able to handle. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think with uh, everyone who signed up, I should have some contact information. So um, yeah, I would love to see this, this uh, environment sensor work in that type of environment. Great. Well, Carrie, I think we're at the end of the road here. I want to thank you so much uh, for joining us for this presentation today. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, and again, I want to thank our audience for joining us. That was a really great Q&A session, and there's obviously 
a lot of interest in this topic, and I know, Carrie, you'll be following up with some people individually, and I strongly encourage everyone to uh, jot down Carrie's email, make sure to reach out to him. Uh, he's very helpful, very responsive, uh, as we've seen here in the presentation today. Uh, so everyone, what I would recommend that you do now is head over to allaboutcircuits.com to see other industry webinars that we have coming up, as well as uh, previous webinars that we've done with Omron also, so we'll find on that site. Um, my name is Jason Montgomery. It's been a pleasure to be your moderator here today, and we look forward to seeing you all at another live session again sometime soon.